All right. Greetings. This is a LGR blurb video about a thing sent to me from a patron of mine. It goes by Deku Nukem. Apparently they are responsible for designing a number of intriguing open source electronic doodads. And this in here is uh, supposed to be one of them. Take a look here at the GitHub page. So it's called the USB 4 VC. USB for vintage computers. USB inputs on retro computers. Yeah, anyway. It's an active protocol converter. that lets you use a USB keyboard, mouse, and different USB game pads, Bluetooth stuff, on a wide range of retro computers with a modular design, supporting different platforms by swapping out these protocol cards. Yeah, I was immediately intrigued by this prospect. This seems extremely cool and extremely useful. <laughs> So at the moment, there's only two of these two platforms that it supports IBM PC compatibles and Apple desktop bus. So I don't actually know what is in the box. Uh, more protocol cards are planned after launch. It does also a, a Raspberry Pi based thing. So I'll need to uh, provide a Raspberry Pi. Oh, okay. Well, apparently there's a Kickstarter campaign too. Hmm. I didn't know that. But yeah, it's, it's supposed to be like an open source project that you can put together yourself or whatever. Or maybe he was planning on selling them individually. Uh, apparently also a Kickstarter campaign. I... Well, anyway, I'm just, I'm really intrigued by the whole prospect here. Especially using something like a, I don't know, a PS4 or 5 controller. Or Xbox controller and like a DOS PC, that'd be super cool. Or some of my more modern USB keyboards and older computers. Something that I've wanted to do because I've got some old style modern USB keyboards. Anyway, how does it actually work? Baseboard contains user buttons, OLED screen, and Raspberry Pi. It handles UI and input events, which are processed and sent to the protocol card. You plug that into the side there. Uh, each has a dedicated microcontroller and appropriate connectors for the target computer. Neat! By splitting duties, the Pi can focus on input parsing. And the protocol card handles time and critical signal generation, resulting in a flexible architecture and reliable performance. Apparently really low latency. I cannot be intrigued anymore. Let's just try this out. This is a prototype that was just offered to be sent in, so I don't expect this to be final or anything. Oh, like a note. Hi, Clint. Thank you very much for checking it out. You're welcome. Work I've done, other rich or tech YouTubers inspired him to start working on this project over the past few months. Awesome. He's also included another one of his projects, a ducky pad. Yeah, I saw that on uh, the Deku Nukem YouTube channel. It's a mechanical macro pad that lets you automate keyboard and mouse actions to streamline workflows. And it should also work with retro computers now with the USB 4 VC. Well, that's intriguing. Probably not 100% bug free at the moment. That's fine. <laughs> I'll let you know if I have any issues. Uh, thank you very much, Alan. Got some cables here, handy stuff. An AT five pinned in to PS2 keyboard. Let's see, you got some serial pass through here. So I got looks like 15 pin game port pass through here. Mm, and a little tool. Nifty. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> 20 of the best edutainment demos around. Got a CD-ROM I have never seen before. Oh, hey, it's got a bunch of demos for some good stuff. Yeah. Putt Putt Saves the Zoo, Let's Explore Stuff, Castle of Dr. Brain. That's a pretty cool disc. Could even save the best disc ever. Okay, so we got three boxes here. They're all labeled. Different things. We got a ducky pad here. <laughs> Intrigued to try that. Interestingly, I have one of those, like, uh, the ducky branded um, num pads. It's like a calculator. But it's also a completely separate USB numpad thing. I wonder if the name is inspired by that. I don't know. Ah, okay. This looks like a PC module protocol board. Neat. So, yeah. 15-pin game port serial. Got some uh, USB-C there for power. PS2 keyboard and mouse, and there's the connector. It's going to go to the main board. That's pretty awesome. Oh. <laughs> well, isn't that cute? A blue micro SD Xeria card. Yes, yeah, came from the UK. 
Uh, here is the baseboard. So I got a little OLED here, power, couple buttons for power on and off. Stuff plugs in the side, Raspberry Pi goes right there. And uh, does support apparently pretty much any Raspberry Pi from one, two, three, four, all the various models, even the, I think the zero, but of course you'll need a USB hub for that because you want to have USB stuff to plug into this. You got some other buttons here, presumably for controlling the menus. Nice. So, that's just uh, simple as that right there. And then this gives you uh, all your stuff that'll go out to a PC. Of course, I will need to provide a Raspberry Pi, but I got a bunch of those lying around. Thank goodness, because there is a shortage right now. I don't know if you've seen, but like, dude, like a regular old, old Raspberry Pi, like models twos and threes are even going for like a hundred bucks now. It's ridiculous. And the fours, like $150 on Amazon. It's just like none of them. Anyway, yeah. So this is the Apple side of things. So ADB. Same connector over there, USB for power, and then a couple of ADB ports. Don't know if I'll be able to test that in this video because I don't actually have any old Apple machines on me at the moment. I have to go and dig them out of storage. Oh yeah, a bunch of extra goodies. So PS2 pass-throughs there to go from the module to your PC. ADB, same thing. Couple little uh, stickers. Little rubber feet, bumpers. Be kind of cool to have a, a case for this, honestly. Actually, is that what this is? Oh, kind of. Okay. So, like, yeah, mounting plates. So that, that works in lieu of a full-on enclosure. Cool. And then there is uh, the ducky pad, which I don't know if I'm going to test here or not. I mean, I'm definitely going to try it out. I'm intrigued. But, uh, yeah, I didn't know that this was going to be included in there at all. Wow, this is like the full-on, like, modular thing, huh? Dude, kale box navy clears. I don't know if Alan was taking notes, but these are some of my favorite modern switches. <laughs> I've put these in a couple of different keyboard builds. They're really nice for, uh, like, the modifier keys around the edges. And, yeah, I mean, like a numpad. Just a extra click to them, a little extra force. Got these translucent uh, keycaps as well, because this whole thing is RGB lit up and just ah, super fascinating looking. I've only seen it, like I said, on uh, the YouTube channel. He's got, look at this. That's super cool, dude. You got the screen on this side and this display is gonna show what each of these does. It's a nice handy little reference there. A little micro SD card in there already. <laughs> also USB-C, so looks like this goes, yeah, just goes in the back plate. Yeah, something like that. And then the switches, yeah, and you can switch these out with whatever switches you like, but I mean, I'm already a fan of these. So that's cool. And you got little RGB uh, LEDs going on there. That is, yeah, this is really cool. Thank you for sending this. I was totally not expecting it. Anyway, uh, yeah, this is definitely going to be the focus here. So let me go and get a, uh, a Raspberry Pi. <laughs> Try it out on an old PC. This is really exciting. Oh. Okay, so just wait for the Pi to boot up. Uh, apparently faster booting is something that should be coming in the future, I was reading. Uh, just something being worked on, but you know, prototype and whatnot. And yeah, it just came up directly with, <laughs> I think, what we need. So a uh, keyboard set to AT slash PS2, uh, PS2 mouse, and generic 15 pin game port uh, joystick gamepad thing, so. We'll try it with this PS5 controller first. Ah. So yeah, you can go between XT and AT, or PS2, which is awesome. I uh, got serial and PS2 mouse. Mouse and keyboard for gamepad, so that's actually a pretty neat feature. You can map 
uh, gamepad buttons and inputs to uh, mouse controls. <laughs> I saw, uh, I think it was in the YouTube video that it was on this channel. It was showing Ski Free being played with a controller. So that's normally mouse only. So that's pretty cool. Mouse sensitivity settings, a joystick curve. Ah, okay. I can save and quit. Here's, uh, I guess, some firmware information. I guess it can probably also do some Wi-Fi stuff. I don't, I don't know. Oh, update US via USB flash drive. Okay. Uh, pair Bluetooth. Let me go ahead and try that out. Okay, it looks like it found that. All right, IBM Aptiva 2137 going here because it's going here. I already had it set up and it was easy to connect to, so uh, <laughs> why not? I'd like to try this with, you know, some pure DOS stuff as well, but uh, you know, why not? Okay, let's see just if the keyboard works. Oh, well, that's a... <laughs> it's already, it's working straight away. Dude, yeah, this is just like a random wireless keyboard uh, plugged in real quick because it was nearby. I usually have it over in my TV. What about this other one? I'll plug this one in as well that I often use. <laughs> yeah, this one plugs in, works just fine too. So that's what those uh, two little wireless bits are that are plugged in there. Nice. <laughs> Dude. Oh man, that feels good too. Like uh, not laggy or anything. I can't notice anything weird. Dude, that is awesome. All right. Let's try this other little guy. <laughs> this one is a little laggier, but that's because this one in general is a little bit of a laggier device. I usually just use this for like quick typing things in on um, other various smaller devices like the Mister or whatever. Yeah, that's a uh, USB keyboard and mouse working over PS2. I mean, which is awesome, but honestly, even more awesome is the whole idea of PS5 controller working over Bluetooth over game port. So, all right, yeah, so game controller is here. Should just be able to add pretty much any of these. So, I'm just gonna go with three axis, four button joystick. We'll see how that does. So I don't know how many axes it'll let us use here. So we'll calibrate it. Oh, oh, <laughs> that's so cool. So, all right, D-pad and left stick work for axis one, X and Y. So this is just the center position one. Nice, got a button one here. Uh, set the range of motion. Yeah, we'll do the calibration here. Center position. For axis, okay, yeah. Well, that's cool. So it does allow me to use the second stick as axis three. That's awesome. All right. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, so the triggers are button one and two. Left trigger is four, or left left bumper. Interesting, I would have thought it would have mapped straight to the face buttons. Uh, I did also read that the PS5 or just the PlayStation controllers hadn't been super tested with this yet, on this prototype anyway, in the earlier version of the software. So I'm sure this might be, or could be addressed. There's also a way to manually remap things yourself by taking a micro SD card, putting it in a modern computer. There's a program for mapping the buttons to whatever you want. Still though, this is straight up witchcraft. Bluetooth PS5 controller going through the game port. <laughs> so yeah, we've, we've got to try it with, with something. There weren't a whole ton of games on here. I haven't done all the work to this machine that I want to yet, but I do have uh, Commander Keen Goodbye Galaxy on a floppy disk. So 
Let's just see if this works. Normally it detects game port things straight away. Yeah, look at that. Joystick is detected. <laughs> this is so cool. Loading from that floppy disk. Oh, I haven't actually got the refresh rate correct. Oh, this is nuts. Okay. Uh, press a button for jump. Okay, that one I can't map, I guess, because, yeah. Fire status will do. Oh, oh that's so cool. Okay. <laughs> yeah, load from that flappy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so great! Dude! The fact that it's Bluetooth and wireless, like, I've seen some other things, you know, to get modern controllers working on an older system, especially Windows systems. You can do that, there's direct input, there's... Oh, I got some jittery stuff going on, that's, uh... Yeah, anyway, that's pretty normal. But yeah, man, oh my goodness. The fact this is working over Bluetooth like this. Man, yeah, I, I really, I want to remap this so that this works as the pogo. But like I said, it's just not detecting this button or it's just not set up to right now by default. Hopefully that'll be fixed in the future. I've no doubt it will. I'll let uh, Alan know that that's kind of weird. Whoops, dang it. See, I'm, <laughs> I'm like naturally going to some of these other buttons for some reason. D-pad is a little weird, like it, unless it detects. I don't really know what's going on there. I noticed it was a little strange too when I was configuring it or calibrating it. Like it works, but yeah, like if you're slightly off like this, oh yeah. That's a little funky, but I, I, that might just be the controller in this particular game really. I'll have to try this with uh, Xbox Series X controller, because that's got a really nice D-pad. Well, a yeah, clicky one. But yeah, the analog feels great. Oh, I love this. I love this so much. Yeah, just, just butting in here from the future, it totally works with really old DOS machines as well. I got a PCAT 5170 here, and uh, doesn't you know do it by default, but if you go over to Joystick settings. Do the calibration real quick. <laughs> Perfectly fine. I also haven't had any of that D-pad weirdness with this, so I think it really was an issue with the calibration on my part by just not doing it fully properly in Windows 98. Anyway, back to that with an Xbox controller. Let's just try it with USB. Okay, screensaver, sure, why not? Yeah, that. I mean, that worked straight away. And this has all the four, the four face buttons. Interesting. So yeah, it definitely seems to be like uh, with the PS5, that's probably just it hasn't been tested yet <laughs> and will be hopefully available and maybe the next firmware. You know, let's try this again. Actually, you know what? Let's just go into straight up DOS. Don't even mess with Windows here. I like to see it work without any Windows going, no control panel, no drivers, no nothing. <laughs> well, not detected there. Wonder why. Of course, it's also not detecting the sound at all. You know what? I bet I'm going to have to put in some Crystal uh, DOS drivers because without those, it, it doesn't. It, it's not going to know what to do with this little integrated sound chip at all in DOS mode. Which, honestly, that's to be expected. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. Yeah, it's that. Yeah, okay. So that's fine. That makes sense. There we 
Yeah. Oh yeah. So that stick works nicely. Let's see about the D-pad. Yeah, man. Actually, now thinking back, I might not have even fully calibrated for uh, the D-pad on the PS5. Because I think when I was doing the calibration, I was just doing the stick instead stick and D-pad, because this is going to get more into the corners on that little calibration box. So, yeah, totally might have been my fault. Either way, though. Working fantastically, and we have the four face buttons, as I would expect. This is great. All right, I like this a lot. Okay, a couple more things I want to try here. We'll get the Switch controller out for this, because why not test a different controller while I'm at it? So that also isn't quite right. <laughs> so this, that doesn't work. These face buttons work. And then left trigger is button one. Left bumper is button four. So yeah, some kinks to work out with a default controller mapping, I suppose. Uh, anyway, one of the things I wanted to test out was the uh, mouse and keyboard emulation over a controller. So... Oh, that is super weird! Oh, this is weird! And extremely cool. I would kind of expect the mouse cursor to be the left one, but I'm assuming you can configure that. How do I hold on? Hmm. So clicking is fine, but clicking and dragging in this mode... Well, that's unfortunate. Again, maybe there's some way to, to change the way that works or can be fixed. Uh, nope, don't do that. Uh, let's see, what is right click? There we go. Gotta try ski free. I mean, you know. Oh, dude. <laughs> this is great. Oh, yeah. Dude. This is so neat. Super useful. Kind of makes me wonder if you could also do this with, like, the PS5's touchpad and have that be the mouse. All right. Final thing I want to test, that is this big old beast, the modern Model F keyboard, which is USB only. And one thing that I lamented and kind of wanted ever since this thing came out was, uh, you know, a, a proper connection for PS2 or even like AT, XT, that kind of thing. So I could use this on actual old vintage machines. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I could plug it into, and I have plugged it into Windows 98 machines like this before, but I'm just curious if it'll run through here, like if this is gonna have the power and stuff. It should, right? Oh, ho, ho. it sure does. Oh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This alone! Ooh, I just noticed that the refresh rate's been off this whole time since I rebooted. Okay, this is so cool. This, this, oh, this right here, man. Talk about such a lifesaver, because I have not been able to find any kind of USB to AT or PS2 or XT, kind of any, any of that stuff that would uh, let me use this keyboard and other you know, modern USB keyboards with older machines reliably at all. And this just works straight away. Like that's just straight up plugged it in, there you go. Um, and I presume that I could just go over here and switch the keyboard protocol from AT to XT. And then in theory, I could use this on like, yeah, a PC or PC XT or, that's, that's so cool. Man, 
Ow. I've got to set up one of those systems and test that out because that would be wonderful. But anyway, that's pretty much it, man. I, I just am so pleased with this little thing. I'm definitely going to put it more together in terms of, a, yeah, it's a little base and stuff. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it for the USB 4VC. Uh, I'll put uh, links in the description for the GitHub and like, uh, I guess the Kickstarter. It's not up, but it's supposed to be at some point in the future. I don't normally promote Kickstarters, you know, I definitely don't do like LGR videos on them, but people send me these links all the time. Oh, here's this project or whatever. And it's like, it's not done, but could you promote it? And it's like, no, this one is not done, <laughs> but at least there's a, like a tangible product that works very well already. And uh, yeah, I guess it'll be going on sale on their Tinder, Tinder. They're Tindy. <laughs> God, that's, that's, <laughs> that's a sign I've been recording too long. Thanks for watching this blurb.